Hey everyone, welcome to the final installment of my Crystal Isles PvE build tutorial series, where we will be finishing the wall and building the entire dino pen. In the previous two videos, we built the main portion of the base followed by the entire wall layout taking the first half to completion. We also built the entire dino museum. To make sure everything lines up properly, it is suggested that you start at the first video and make your way through the series. I have left links to the first two videos as well as a full base tour video in the description below. But if you're all caught up, let's finish this build. Heading back to where we finished the first half of the wall, continue placing large walls in the center of the foundations and around the two tile hexes. Keep placing walls until you reach this section of 12 regular foundations. At this point, place 5 large walls, leave a gap of 2 foundations for a dino gate, and then continue placing large walls until you reach the final observation tower near the Behe gate. Next, we will place a double door frame at the base of the observation tower and fill the top with three walls to reach the same height as the large walls. Now surround the two tile hex with large walls and place a tech generator in the center of the tower. Place a door to fill the double door frame and then continue to fill in the wall and two tile hex using large and regular walls to reach essentially the same height. As mentioned in the previous video, this won't line up perfectly due to the way that we placed our foundations, but for me it was a small price to pay to complete the wall in this manner. Once completed, head over to the gap we left on the wall, line yourself up using your hotbar and a foundation, and then place the dino gate as centered as possible in the gap. The rest of the wall is built in the same manner as in video 2, so I will check back in with you shortly.
When we get back to the two tile hex that houses the tech generator near the Behe gate, we will need to do a couple of things to finish off this area. First, place three regular foundations along the wall followed by four regular ceilings. Next, hang regular walls below the foundations and ceilings, running them into the ground. Place a set of stairs on the end of the ceilings and run railings back to finish off the walkway. This last railing can be skipped as we will fill this area with large walls. Change any exposed foundations to blocks and then continue filling in the inner wall by placing a ceiling over the door gap and placing large and regular walls to fill all the remaining gaps. Finally, head back outside the wall to flip the foundations to blocks and cap them off with sloped ceilings. When you reach the dino gate, cap the sloped ceilings with sloped walls and place a couple of sets of stairs in front of the gate. Continue around until you reach the Behe gate, capping any exposed edges with sloped walls. When you reach the tower at the Behe gate, run walls below whichever foundations need them to have them transition smoothly into the ground, and cap the remaining wall foundations with sloped triangle ceilings. Thank you. 
All right, now that the wall is complete, we can start laying out the foundations for the cloning area in Dino Pen. Heading back to where we finished off the Dino Museum, go to the southernmost triangle foundation and place nine regular foundations working away from the triangles. Next, repeat this on the other side and then turn left to connect the two sections. Once you close off the rectangle, continue to place eight foundations from each corner, capping off the end. Repeat this on the north side of the rectangle and then fill the area with regular foundations. Head back to the triangle foundation you started at and follow the foundations across to the other side and place four rows of triangle foundations heading to the right. At the end, place a few triangle foundations directly to the right along the last row. Head back to the northern triangle foundation and repeat the process, this time working to the left. Once you tie into the foundations on the other side, fill the center with triangle foundations. We will now lay out the foundations for the dino pen. Starting at the southernmost triangle foundation you just placed, place 16 regular foundations heading towards the back wall. Now turn right and place another 27 foundations to make a total length of 28. Turn right again, place another 15 foundations, and finally turn right once more and place foundations making your way back to the first one you placed. From the same foundation, place four rows of triangle foundations leading to the right. Next, head to the opposite side and place four rows of triangle foundations heading to the left and then continue placing foundations along the last row to meet up with the other side. Now we will head to the back edge of the dino pen where we will leave a gap of two foundations and then place eight rows of triangle foundations heading to the right. At this point, we will make our way to the opposite side and place eight rows of triangle foundations heading to the left directly off the corner foundation, and then continue placing them along the last row to meet up with the other side. Next, we will head to the north edge of the dino pen and mirror the shape of the south edge. To finish off the outline of the dino pen, head back to the south foundation where we started and move in four foundations to leave a gap of three. At this point, place triangle foundations along the same angle as the front edge across the gap. Next, turn around and starting from the same point, bridge the gap with regular foundations and then switch back to triangles to repeat the process on the north side. Once this is complete, we can fill all of the rear sections with their appropriate foundations, leaving the front sections open for now.
For this next part, we will be switching back and forth between large and regular walls to start building up the shape of the dyno pen. Starting from the southwesternmost point of the front sections, place a large wall first followed by two stacks of two regular walls, ensuring they are all facing the same direction. At the first corner, place three large walls and then leave a gap of six foundations before placing two more large walls. I messed up here by only placing one large wall, but you will see me fix it shortly. Make your way along placing stacks of two walls until you reach about halfway, and then head to the next corner and place a large wall. Leave a gap of two foundations for a dino gate, and then place another large wall. Next, place stacks of two walls along until we reach where we left off. Now we will continue building in this pattern around the dino pen, capping each corner with large walls and filling the centers with stacks of two regular walls. At this point here, leave another gap of two foundations to allow for another dino gate, and then continue the pattern. This section here is too small to fit another set of windows, so I filled it in with large walls and then continued with the pattern until reaching the other side. At this point, we can fill in the front section with the appropriate foundations. Once complete, Head back to the southern edge and place a large wall followed by two stacks of walls and another large wall. Now we will place railings along the edge of the foundations until we reach the foundation at the end of the cloning area. At this point run stairs along the edge until you reach the other side and then place railings on each end of the stairs and then continue along to connect with the Dino Museum. Head to the other side and continue placing railings and stairs around the outside edges until you reach the dino gate where we will leave a four foundation gap and then place four more railings before matching the wall configuration from the south. This would be a good time to place the cloners to finish off this area. Working from the railing, move over to the fifth foundation and align yourself with using your hotbar. Next, get a cloner ready to go and then enter third person mode to align the cloner as close to the center as possible. I lined mine up with the second row of foundations in. Next, we will continue to build the walls up to their final height. You will see here what I mentioned earlier about changing this stack to a large wall. Add two more large walls on top of these two, and then top the walls with a regular and two sloped walls, ensuring they are all facing the same direction. Head to the other end of this wall and place large walls on top of the two large walls that frame the dino gate gap. 
Make your way back to the left side of the gap for the Behe gate and place large walls above these two and mirror the regular and sloped walls from the other side. Moving to the next large wall to the left, place three regular walls followed by a left sloped wall. Next, place four greenhouse walls and then place three regular walls to continue the sloped wall angle to meet with the outside wall. Next, head to the other side of the Behe gate gap and fill this section with greenhouse walls four rows high and then top them off with two rows of regular walls. Skip the gap for the dino gate for now and build the last section up in the same manner as we did on the south side. Lastly, place greenhouse walls in the remaining gaps to finish off the front section walls. The final height for the dino pen is based around the regular foundations, with the triangle foundation section sloping up to meet the ceiling tiles from the top of the large walls. To achieve this, Head to the north wall and place greenhouse walls two rows high across to the next large wall. Around the next corner, fill the gap with four greenhouse walls and slope up using regular and sloped walls from left to right to reach a height of four above the large wall. Up next is the rear dino gate gap where we will place large walls above each one surrounding the gap. Moving to the right, place three stacks of two greenhouse walls and then build up to the height of the large walls using regular and sloped walls again. The next section can all be filled with greenhouse walls, and as we make our way around the next corner, fill this gap with greenhouse walls as well. From the right side of this section, place four large walls to match the other side, and then build up to these with regular and sloped walls. Head to the top right of this section and use sloped walls to build the height up two more rows. For the next section of walls, use large, regular, and sloped walls to build up to the previous wall height and then start sloping down to the right to match the other side. Continue this pattern until we meet up to where we began. We will get started on the roof next. Starting from the large walls to the right of the front dino gate, place ceilings all the way along until you reach the first sloped wall. At this point, place a sloped ceiling followed by a regular ceiling and a wall to give you a snap point to bridge the Behe gate gap. Repeat the steps from the other side to give support from this side as well. Next, run a second row of regular and sloped ceilings on the other side of the front wall. Next, cap off the ceilings and walls at the Behe gate with sloped walls. And then place sloped triangle ceilings along each side of the wall, working our way up to meet the ceilings above. Moving to the right, Place two rows of greenhouse sloped triangle ceilings to the same height as the previous triangles, followed by a row of sloped triangle ceilings. Next, place four greenhouse sloped ceilings, followed by two more regular sloped ceilings. Continue this pattern across the front of the dino pen and mirror the triangle ceilings on the other side. Next, we will drop walls down from the ceilings above the dino gate gap, leaving an opening of 2x4.
Next, we will start filling in the roof with greenhouse ceilings. The layout for the rest of the roof is fairly straightforward. Using regular, triangle sloped and sloped ceilings wherever you meet with regular walls, filling the rest with greenhouse pieces. So I will check back in to give further details on a few key locations shortly. After placing triangle ceilings to bridge the gap above the rear dyno gate, drop walls in the same manner as the front, leaving the same 2x4 opening. Once we reach the end of the greenhouse ceiling tiles with the greenhouse triangle ceilings, we will taper the triangle ceilings over to be two rows wide to meet up with the wall to allow us to build the raised section. Once you reach the end, place greenhouse sloped triangle ceilings along the edge of the triangle ceilings two rows high, following the taper around to meet the regular greenhouse ceilings. Once completed, finish placing the greenhouse triangle ceilings. Next, we will build the raised section to completion. Stemming from the place tiles on the left, run greenhouse sloped and regular ceilings to meet up with the greenhouse sloped triangle ceilings we placed earlier. Make sure the last tile you place in the corner here is a regular ceiling to keep the solid border around the dyno pen. To finish off the roof, place triangle slope ceilings and sloped ceilings along the west wall of the southernmost section and then fill the remaining gap with greenhouse pieces.
Now we will start putting the finishing touches on the dino pen by placing the behemoth gate as well as both dino gates. When placing the dino gates, finish the area off by adding a few more sets of stairs and railings. Heading back to the cloning area, center yourself off and place another teleporter. Next, place a tech generator just inside the Behe gate and set it to the maximum radius. This will allow it to power the cloners and the teleporter as well as one of the observation towers. Placing another generator by the back dino gate will give you coverage for the remaining two towers. All right. We are almost finished. The only thing left to do is place the breeding platforms. I have found over the years that breeding certain dinos like snow owls, velos, and manas, or any dino that you have to practically crawl underneath to retrieve the egg or baby, is a lot easier if you build a raised platform for them to stand on, allowing you to run around and freely retrieve them. For velos and other small creatures, I simply run a row of regular ceilings one tile high along each wall I would like them on. For manas, I run a single row along the wall and then extend out from this platform six ceilings every other tile as shown. Next, place stairs along the initial platform between each extension. At this height, the manas will be able to just walk onto the platforms and can share each platform with the mana beside it. Next, place a couple of incubators and troughs and then go around and make sure all of our lights are painted and turned on. I typically do not put too many colored lights inside the dino pen as I want to see the true colors of the baby dinos as they come out, but I did place a couple of lights to accent the gates on the front of the dino pen. With those last few finishing touches complete, that brings us to the end of this three part series. Thank you very much for your interest and for sticking with me during this massive compound build. If you have any questions at all about the base, please do not hesitate to ask below and I will do my best to help. That's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, keep gaming.